Police General. Federal Police. An escort by gun toting Federales. This is. is bad at any time. You're a best friend, please. But a Christmas Day snafu has Carrie and his 18 year old daughter Claire in the legal crosshairs. They hear there's no customs today. No, it's late. It's Christmas, right? Yeah. It's the last stop in Brazil before we leave the country completely, and customs is mandatory. Customs office was closed because it's Christmas, and there's no way to get a hold of them. They're not even answering the phone. See you tomorrow. So you're leaving the country, right? We're trying. <laughs> they don't have any personal friends of yours. You couldn't maybe call them so we could keep going? <laughs> Normally, when I'm dealing with immigration, Try to turn on the charm, lighten the situation up, but uh, that wasn't working today. This guy was not cracking a smile. Where are the, the, the tickets? When you enter in Brazil, they gave you a ticket, right? Where are the tickets? Got yours, Claire? Now you're going to embarrass me, Claire, because you whipped yours right out. It's going to take me 10 minutes to find mine. When you come into Brazil, you get a little slip of paper that you fill out for customs, and you can't lose that. I just saw it. What did I do with that? Well, I need this to go, right? Yeah. I mean, it's an instant little piece of paper. Who cares? But now that he's making a huge deal out of it, might be in the plane, you want me to go get it? I really have no idea where this is going to go. What I did with that thing, some What did I put there? Yep, he's always telling me, make sure you don't lose this. And he said that about this paper, and he's the one that lost it. If I don't find this thing, I don't know what this guy is going to do. Uh, I do not have it. So now I get to go back in there and uh, deal with Dr. Cheerful. I might be spending this Christmas in jail. Still don't have my passport. My wallet's not in there. Brad's on his own search and rescue mission. Brad's luggage has been removed from his room. Everything is just sitting in front of the hotel. And his passport's missing. That passport is gone. I'm pissed, man. Excuse me, could you tell me why someone went into my room and took all my stuff and packed it? If I don't have my passport, I'm doomed. I'm stuck here. My wallet's gone. All my credit cards have no cash. 21. I don't want my stuff back in my room. I, I'm leaving now. Where's my passport? OK. Thank you. They put his passport in a shaving kit. Here's my wallet. Did you do an underwear count yet? Dude. <laughs> but it was pretty funny. What's the word? Internet connection's a little slow here. Well, Corey is connected online, so I'm going to call him. I'm just going to give him a heads up about a couple things. With the boss eight time zones away. Hey, Brad, what's going on? Brad makes sure to let him know the client's plane is still in one piece. What's up, dude? We finally made it to Malawi. We finally got released from South Africa. How's the plane checking out? Uh, the plane is totally excellent. The bugs are worked out. Good. Hey, I just wanted to talk to you. On this flight, I had to bid it with very little margin because there was a lot of people bidding on it. That plane needs to be ran in economy settings. So we burned the least amount of fuel possible. 
Corey's asking them to fly like Sunday drivers. Every dollar counts. He's asking us to pull back the power to almost an unflyable setting. Brad knows this already. He knows 99% that's wrong. All right, we'll do our best. But really the only way to prove it is to do it. So he said, okay. Okay, cool, man. Talk to you guys later. I have never, ever seen a 1900, even at 25,000 feet, burn that little gas. You have so much time in this thing that I would just defer to your expertise. We'll try it. We'll do an experiment, and we'll see what happens. So, tracks are on, belts are on, brakes, prop levers are forward, battery doors are up, fuel's balanced, and sufficient engine antennas up, and off the brakes. Here we go. Pause the brake. Flaps are up, gears up, bleeds are on, climb bar set, engine instruments are happy. We're going to set the powers just like Corey wants. We're going to do this just like he wants. We're just going to watch the fuel like we've never watched fuel before. That's the plan of attack. Oh, shoot. But look at our ground speed. We are crawling. It slows down so slow. It slows down to the speed of like a little two-seater Cessna. We're, we're hanging off the prop in the air. 130 knots. Normally, that's between 240 and 270. We're sitting still in the sky. We're not even moving. 100 miles an hour slower. So we're going to fly an extra two and a half hours today. And they're only a couple thousand kilometers into their 20,000 kilometer flight in the Beach 1900. They still have to burn through two continents and fly over the freezing Atlantic to meet their deadline in Western Canada. To put it bluntly, Corey's wrong and I'm right. And I'm not gonna give in. It's not happening. That power, go ahead. They decide to ignore Corey's orders. But now... Son of a More trouble. Prop de ice has failed, and the boots are failed. What does that mean for us? We got to avoid icing. We're going to. Uh, we got to avoid Iceland. icing, but we're going to Iceland. What the? <laughs> now, for some reason, the yaw dampener is kicking off. What is happening with this thing? Message altitude fail. God, I can't believe it is all broke, man. I think I put too much faith in this old pig. The altitude selector has failed. The DI's boots are failed. The prop ice is failed. And the yaw dampener has failed. So that means somewhere inside this plane, something's broken that's screwing all this stuff up. Those are the signs that lead to an accident. Did not. Carrie's missing customs form is turning into a federal case. For real. The, the laws must be respected. This guy does not look happy. He's not about to give us a break here. This is a fraction. I mean, if I was just with some other guy as my co-pilot, I wouldn't be really that worried if I get thrown in jail but I'm with my little girl. If he gets thrown into some Brazilian jail, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. At 25 days of this month, in this city, Boa Vista verified that Carrie David McCauley, the moment of the leaving, don't show the card control. He's got the look on his face like, I'm going to jail. I'm really nervous. Some of these guys get a little bit of power, and if they can get a pilot and put the screws to them, they will. You never know where it's going to end up. This is infraction, so you must pay a fee. 
Do you know how much the fee is? 165 and 55 cents. Okay. Sign it there. That's it. Okay. Carrie's a free man. Do you know any uh, good hotels in town? But their plan to spend Christmas Day in the Caribbean. Well, maybe a banana. Is a bust. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We might be here a couple days. There's some issues. We had six failures on the way here, so. Six too many. Six too many. And a couple of pissed off, frustrated pilots. Brad and Stu are facing a delay they can't afford. Um, the planes broke. Barely out of the gate, only Brad has the certification to fly the 1900. And it's about to expire. So if the plane is not delivered by the last day of this month at midnight, the plane sits where, where it sits. Check it out, there he is. T-bone, baby. But their luck is about to turn. Man, oh man. I never thought I'd see you in Africa again. What is up? How's it going, dude? One of the coolest parts about this job is you step off an airplane anywhere in the world and you see an old friend. Five years, probably, since we've been in this, in this country oh, together. Five years. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, I'm totally psyched to see T-bone. I stepped off the plane in Sudan like seven years ago, totally green, and he took me under his wing and taught me how to fly in Africa. He never flown in this part of the world before. I kind of show him, you know, how people are here. You know, we're talking about Africa. Things are really, really tough here and, 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 and complicated. We're all busted up, man. Uh, we can go back yeah. to the hangar, see if there's anybody there that can help you. Maybe they can do something about it. In Africa, it's not what you know, it's who you know. What's up? Any of you guys work on 1900s? Yeah. Yep. We got this 1900. All this stuff just failed. Would you guys be willing to freaking take a look at it? Sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, if it would have happened anywhere else, we'd probably still be sitting there. We would have been dead in the water. But we just so happened to have friends of ours to introduce us. It worked out good. Hopefully, he'll have a diagnosis or a fix in an hour or two, you know? Pilots think if they hang over a mechanic's shoulder that it magically gets fixed faster, and that's just not how it works. So we're waiting on the plane getting repaired. Now it's time for lunch. They're everywhere. We're teeming with monkey wildlife. Yo, 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 hey. They're going after the bags. We are surrounded by really hostile little monkeys. These guys are no joke. That's my food, man. Whoa, he's trying to steal my Red Bull. Oh, what you doing, man? What you doing? Get out of here. Yeah, man, that's my They're nasty. Pretty quiet over here. By now, their plane repair job should be well underway. Almost looks like it hasn't been touched. Almost does. Yeah, he hasn't been here. Sorry, guys, hate to give you the bad news, but got a plane ticket for tomorrow and I gotta leave. Ah. She's like, sorry, man. I'm packing my clothes and I'm going home. Our hearts just sank because we're just stuck. Brad and Stu just lost another day in a race they're paid to win. <laughs> You just stay sleeping, Claire. It'll be a Christmas miracle. You know, if I can't give Claire a Christmas at home, at least I can bring Christmas into the cockpit. Claire? Merry Christmas, Claire. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> kind of looked like we were going to miss Christmas, so I thought I'd add a little Christmas cheer. I even got one for you. <laughs> Welcome, Claire. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The 
guns. <laughs> oh, yeah, double guns. <laughs> Claire's been a real trooper on this trip. I think she deserves something very special this Christmas. So I decided to get her something you can't buy at the mall. How about this, Claire? For your Christmas present, I'm giving you the entire Caribbean island chain. Any island you want to go to, we're going. What? <laughs> Who gets to do that? Yeah. Just choose <laughs> any island. <laughs> Probably one of the coolest, most unique Christmas presents I've got. I would hope so. Having conquered the Amazon jungle, a little Caribbean recharge comes just in time. Next, it's the final big push to delivery in North Carolina. Okay, Claire, here's the first island in the chain that you can uh, choose from. What do you think of this one? Not very many beaches. So that's a no on this island. Okay, on to the next. This island has a great big, huge town. It's a little industrial for my liking. Farms and like stuff. <laughs> Your island does not meet Claire's specifications. Sorry. Sorry. Try again. This island looks pretty damn bitchin'. Looks kind of sweet. Is this your Christmas present? I think so. Let's sign here and check it out. Nevis. Never been to Nevis. 31655. Hello. Good, how about you? Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> well, we were just flying by and saw this beautiful island, so we need Good, to stop and... This is and... the place to be. There's sunshine on the other side and a little rain, and it's, it's only a cloud passing. It's only a passing cloud, that's what we say here. Okay. We're walking towards the beach. There's two beachside restaurants. One is called Coconut. I was hoping for some sun. That's all I wanted, just beach in the sun, and this is far from it. Yeah, he has been here. So this is kind of disappointing. All right, well. Stranded with a broken plane and no mechanic. Hey, what's going on, man? Brad and Stu scramble to find a replacement. Can we can we freaking muscle you into maybe uh, taking a look at our plane? Um, yeah, I think we could probably do it. Tell us what you guys yeah. want. We'll make it happen. You, you guys buy the short hairs right now. Yeah. The mechanic and the electrician came to help us and did so much for us, really for nothing in return. That's uh, right in the back here. You have this uh, fuse right on the end. That was popped. There's a little tiny fuse. So I mean literally, pull it out, put in a new one, fixed. Everyone else is good. Something so small wrecked everything. And we'll close this up. Let's make like a baby and head out. So once we got out of Uganda, we were turning jet fuel into noise and really covering some ground. We hit Sudan. That is pretty badass. You know, we made it to Egypt. Spent the night. Wow, look at how pretty. And we get to see what it looks like for 10 minutes on our way to the airport in the morning. We get to see some amazing exotic places. The only problem is that you blow through them so fast, it can be really exhausting. You don't really notice it when you're flying because you're working, but when those wheels hit, it just floods over you. We're tired. What kind of services do you need? Uh, we need massage. <laughs> uh, we need room service. We just traversed the entire continent of Africa in a couple days and some of Europe. It's OK to be a little tired. We get in exhausted. We made it. Go to the hotel, wolf something down, Thank you, appreciate it. Half the time you're so sweaty and dirty, you know, you need to take a shower and you just don't. I'm just burnt out. You collapse in the bed, and the alarm goes off at six in the morning and you have to head back out to the airport. It's hard work, it's not easy. All right, so uh, Italy down, time for Scotland. All right, we have igniters, we have engine anti-ice. 
America feed the live. Brad and Stu cross 12 borders in five days. Um, we're having some real issues. But to boss Corey, they're going rogue. On these long trips, especially in a bigger airplane like this, it's important to save as much fuel and as much money as possible. It slows the plane down so pilots bitch about it. He sent me an email with some foul language in it. And he sent me these numbers again. You're going to go this fast, and I'm going to save thousands. We tried. It just doesn't work. We're pros. That's what insults me the most, is that I'm a pro. I've been doing this professionally for like 12 or 13 years. And we're being preached to by someone who doesn't even have 1,000 hours. Didn't answer his emails, didn't really care, because I was like, dude doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't think Corey really realized how much he was asking of us. So we scheduled the call. Bet you 10 bucks I'm going to be totally aggravated in 10 minutes. Oh, totally. And tower 3165, ready for takeoff. OK, gas, undercarriage, mixture, props, bumps. Rolling. Here, Claire, you do it. I can't reach the. Seven days into this flight, oh, yours. Carrie decides to take off the training wheels. Claire, make us fly. And stop coaching Claire on takeoff. A pilot needs confidence. A pilot needs to be able to push the situation every once in a while and learn a few things. I really hope she steps up. And tower three and six with Pa, could we uh, do a left turn over the harbor? Thank you. Okay, let's take us over that sailing ship there, Claire. What Claire's just done. I got it. I got the controls. Is like letting go of the steering wheel on an interstate on ramp. All right, Claire. If I catch you taking pictures on takeoff again, um, you're not flying the rest of the trip. You do not do that. Seriously. If we're still over the ground. We're only doing 100. You're not paying attention. You're the one flying the plane. If nobody's watching the airspeed indicator, we could stall and crash. That's serious. You do not mess around on takeoff. OK, I thought that I was in the same spot that you were when you pulled out your camera and were taking I I'm me, mean, you're you. I got 6,000 hours. You don't. OK. There have been hundreds of pilots that have been killed over the years because they let small distractions take them away from the primary duty, which is flying the airplane. Claire needs to basically just learn to be a better pilot. Our lives depend on it. I want you to hand fly for a while. Get on your instruments. Might be a little bumpy, so it'll be kind of a challenge to try to hold your heading and your altitude. No yelling. I might not yell. There's a 50-50 chance I won't yell. I am not super experienced. I haven't had the proper training. My dad is expecting me to know how to use all these instruments like it's no big deal, but. Practice your scan and no more than five degrees off your heading. When you're learning how to fly, and especially when you're learning how to fly in instruments, you have to learn how to deal with distractions. You have to learn how to concentrate. That might pour some water on your head. He wants to prove that you need to be able to handle any sort of distraction when you're flying. You have to fly smooth or it's going to pour. OK, I can't control how smooth the plane goes. Oh, like, that's kind of a lame excuse. Oh, it's so close. Yeah. Oh. oh, my god. How'd you do? Fine. Ah. One degree off. One degree. Whatever my dad's got to do to teach me to be a good pilot, ah. <laughs> I'm good with it. I just got to roll with the punches. Oh, huh. Check out the right fuel indicator. Thank you.
This court? Thought I would give you a little call and just get everything on the table. Okay. I sent an email saying, here's the speed you should be at. And, and that was not replied to. Brad knew from the beginning that it was almost uh, unheard of to operate the aircraft at those settings. Have you tried it? Yeah, we tried it. We well, did it exactly how you wanted it done. It's not realistic to fly the plane that way. It can be done. And no, it can't. It cannot. The difference between running it in economy city and power setting is between five and seven thousand dollars in, in fuel. That's five to seven thousand dollars out of my pocket for you guys pushing the throttles up. You know, we're not trying to steal your money, man. We've been running it the best we can, and I mean, we just have to be realistic. If, if we're doing 18 hour days, adding an extra hour or two to the day, I mean, it's literally impossible to do. And yeah. it's like, we're killing ourselves, man. I've got to have faith in my captains that if they say it's a no-go, it's a no-go. We got every airplane there safe. That's the number one goal, number one priority. Guys, I understand that sometimes changes and whatnot, so we just need to, to move on. And so I have to take a step back and let my captains do their job. OK, all right, guys. All right, we're out of here. See ya. Check out the right fuel indicator. With a gas tank pinned near zero. You see any fuel coming out of the right side? No. Oh. And water for a runway. We've still got 389 miles to go. Carrie and Claire need to find out what's sapping their fuel. I'm going to bank hard right, because sometimes you can't see what's right directly behind you. I want you to look back behind her tail as much as you can. See if you see a stream of fuel or anything coming out the back. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna look on my side. Huh. Fuel quantity circuit breaker. Let me try that. I'll pull that out. Push back in. Oh, there, there we go. go. It made me a little work because it had, hasn't done that before. A simple reset on the circuit breaker does the trick. Hey. Thank you. I got to check the room. I don't know. It's not anywhere else. Hi, this is uh, Stu Sprung. I was wondering if someone could go up to my room and see if uh, I left my passport somewhere. Stuart has misplaced his passport. It's not lost. He's just temporarily unaware of its current location. That's, that's like pilots, you know? We never get lost. We just don't know where we are for the moment. He doesn't know if it's in his bags, if it's in the hotel, if it's in the airport, and we're just we're dead in the water without it. Totally shot. The prospect of losing my passport and not being able to move forward is very stressful for me. Can you hold this and listen to it for a second? Sure. Start, hold on, I'll pull up. I got to start looking. Aha! Did you find it? Yeah. <laughs> fell out of my suitcase. Easy cheesy. Long days and tight turnarounds are starting to catch up to Stu. Sat on my sunglasses. I fell down under my ass right as I sat on. I felt just go flat. Not a good way to start this flight. That sucks. Eight hours later, they're closing in on Greenland. Charlie Golf, uniform, uniform whiskey. But Stu seems to be losing ground. 6-2 north, 4-0 west. Uh, actually, correction, uh, we just passed over 6-2 north. Wait, what the are we doing here? Or this is our last we're, one? We're right? the second. Okay. 6-2 north, 4-0 west. Got uh, 1 3 4 4? 1-3. 4-3. Four, 
We've had a couple of long flying days that neither of us have really recovered from yet. One, three, one, four. One, what? That's the next one, man. Having the issues with the radio is definitely a lot to do with the fact that I'm just tired. All right, sorry about this. Uh, just reporting, uh... One, four, one, three. One, three, four, three. Are we still... Oh, One, three, four, three. Sorry about that. I would just recommend you sharpen that stuff up, you know, you write that stuff down and it's just boom, boom, boom. It's unprofessional, man. Oh, it's I mean, not. It's totally unprofessional. Oh, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's I never, mean, ever, well, you know. It's on you, man. It's not on me. Charlie Golf Uniform, Uniform Whiskey, B180-1433. And next, uh, Bravo Golf, Bravo Whiskey, same time. So that one was better, except we're a Beach 190, not a Beach 180. I said one, <laughs> I didn't, did I say 190? I said 180. It was awesome. Stu is slow off the mark today. <laughs> and Brad's been quick to point it out. Oh, so, uh, 1800, 1900, who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Man, I had the best bag of gummy bears of my life last night. Holy mama. It was like a flavor explosion in my mouth. Now it's not tension infecting this cockpit. They were freaking fruity. It's cabin fever. After sitting next to the same guy for uh, 55 hours, you've covered it all. I love this big wheel so much. That was my pride and joy. I never had anything like that in my whole life. And someone stole it. They and stole it. it. Someone stole it. You've covered every topic. The Fifth grade. I kissed my first the, girl. Uh, this girl named Sylvia. She was like Italian. Incredible. This experience with Brad, I basically gained a new friend for life. You want half? I, I bought this for both of us. No? It's all you. I deliberately brought it to give you one of them. I enjoyed one last night and I didn't share with you, so you enjoy yours today. Now I see how you are. I see a state. I see the United States. Well, one of the United States, that would be Florida. Okay, gas, undercarriage, mixture, props. I have the runway. Okay. Vision height. Thank you. Thank you'll be next behind the traffic on final. Not okay, Pop. Oh, that was a long flight. Long day. We got one more leg to go. We got to get the plane from Fort Lauderdale to North Carolina and complete the mission. It's still about four hours to go. But first, some serious shut eye. You have anything available? There are no hotel rooms. Everything is sold out. At this point of the trip, I was hoping to be home. Miami Beach? I'll take them. I am not only physically exhausted, but mentally exhausted. I am just ready to be done. Toward the end of the trip, I was starting to get a little concerned with Claire's health. Ferry flying is physically demanding and mentally stressful. It wears on a person. A lot of challenging weather up there. Icing and turbulence and low ceilings for the final leg. Eight days into their 9,000 kilometer journey. We're so close. Carrie and Claire face one last push to deliver the plane. Huh. Yeah. That's new, I've never seen that before. But the merchandise is damaged. Something has kind of come loose inside the rubber. The propeller's heating system, which melts ice on contact, could be shot. And with it like that, oh, I can't really trust it. You can't risk getting anywhere near icy. You're going to have to stay below the clouds. Our main below 1,000 feet. You're coming up. Carrie and Claire have to fly low to avoid ice. 
When you're ferrying an airplane, you don't have the luxury to make sure every teeny tiny thing on the plane is fixed. You gotta deliver the airplane. But flying low puts them in the thick of Florida's busy airspace. There's just a million flight schools here and a billion students all buzzing around. There are over 9,000 planes crowding the Florida skies today. November 16 mile, but traffic from flying less than a mile. Helicopter share, helicopter 900. You watch your altitude and heading, I'll watch through to the helicopter. Carrie and Claire need to stay sharp. Number 16 mile, but you still not have a traffic sight head to your right. All right, dude, so it's not positive traffic. Flying down this low, we have another thing besides airplanes to run into. TV towers. It. Yeah. Keep our eyes outside the cockpit. November 3 and 6, Papa. Pilots are supposed to report before they enter new airspace. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we're level at 1,000 feet on course heading uh, 355, just transition. It's how air traffic control keeps the skies from turning into one big collision course. Bonanza 316 Papa, you need a call before you enter the Quest Delta airspace, not after you do. Roger, we just, we've just we been given a head from uh, Executive. Sorry. Well, you still need a call before you get in my Quest Delta. Good day. This last four hour leg of their journey. Papa, proceed due north. Is turning into a real bear. We're in the home stretch, sucker. I can't believe it. Yep. Brad and Stu are on the final lap of a 20,000 kilometer, 13 day sprint around the globe. The weather is so crappy on our last day. No love. Worst weather the whole trip. With murky. God, you gotta be me. That's gonna be sticking. It is gonna stick. We got some clear ice built up on our wings. A buildup of ice can mess with the airflow over the wings. You can see the big white line on the front of the wing. And turn an aircraft into an anchor. I'm gonna blow the boots. De-ice boots are supposed to inflate and crack the ice off. That master warning. Bleed air fail. Me. There's not enough pressure in the system to blow the boots as it's supposed to. Did your boots kick off the ice? That ice didn't come off. For this side's probably quarter, half, half to a quarter inch. It did not kick it off the way it should have. I mean, it kicks off maybe 5% of the ice. If we get into real bad, heavy icing, we're pretty much screwed. Hey, you see those towers? Yep. For Carrie and Claire, flying low to avoid icing... Don't hit those. ...means they face more obstacles than an NFL running back. Captain. Right now, Claire's at the controls. There you go. Now you are getting the right tone. If you had a little cap, you'd want to doff it like this to be like, hey, Cap. Don't push it. OK, airport's over there. Let's slow this baby down. Are yep. we sinking kind of fast? Nope. OK, you're coming down. OK. But pretty bumpy. Yeah, this is pretty turbulent. Keep a little extra speed, help us battle this turbulence. It's pretty bumpy. So we're gonna land a little bit faster than normal. All right, good job. All right, Claire. Yeah, Uruguay to North Carolina. Mm. 
It feels really great to have this trip behind me, and to have done it with Claire was amazing. So Claire, you've uh, you made your first ferry flight. Think you might want to do that again, or maybe even do it for a living? If Claire told me that she wanted to be a ferry pilot, I'd be pretty proud. I'd do it again, but I'm <laughs> too young to decide what I want to do. I mean, I don't even know if I like black olives yet, you know? <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Claire. You did such a great job. I mean, I've <laughs> flown with other ferry pilots that weren't as weren't as competent as you were on this trip. So, <laughs> good job. I think that my dad's perspective on me has really changed as he watched me step up to the plate on this trip. In the end, I think I'm not just his little girl anymore. He can look at me as a co-pilot. Double guns. Double guns. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go home. On the opposite coast, Brad and Stu are on their final leg to British Columbia. This wow. thing is just taking a big old shit on us. Dude, 48 man. minutes to go, and it's just taking a big old turd right on our heads. This is the worst ice we've had. Just hitting these heavy moisture things. Yeah. Jamming us up. We're starting to get out of that little mountain range. So hopefully that'll be it. We should be getting clear of this stuff pretty soon. Ice is starting to fall. Yeah, it's breaking up. The wings are finally starting to clear up. Right base to final for runway one nine. Flaps coming in, gears coming in, props coming up. Cool. Made it. Nicely done. All right. Put her to bed. We made it. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We made it. <laughs> Good to see you, bud. My ass is just sore. Yeah. <laughs> just so many hours in the seat. Hey, what's going on? Well, we finally made it. Well, that was a hell of a trip, man. It was. It was a good flight, but I'm pretty much done with that plane. I don't want to see a 1900 for another month. <laughs> well, I appreciate all your hard work. I mean, I know we had some issues, but at the end of the day, we got the plane there. You guys are all safe, so job well done, man. Yeah, we're golden. OK, dude, talk to you soon. All right, see you. A lot of pilots would never even attempt to do what we do. Dude, it is crazy out there. It's unlike anything else. We'd die from hypothermia by the time anyone got The real okay, question yeah. is, who's going to eat who first? <laughs> we met some neat people. Polar man, outstanding. Oh. No. That's cold. No. <laughs> some new experiences. So what is this Seal thing stuff? Sealed juice. It's hard to explain how happiness just invades your body. Woo! March your drives on the airplane with the propeller. You'll say, OK, <laughs> I did this. That's about time, my brother. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Who gets to do this? I see why I'm a ferry pilot, Claire. I do. I see it. It's really cool for him to watch his little girl turn into a ferry pilot. You're 10 degrees I'm off. I'm trying heading. to deviate from this huge cloud. OK, then. <laughs> on a couple of trips, I'm going to be the one in the back sleeping. Bring it on. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> These are very dangerous flights. We have to face all kinds of different challenges. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Cool. Dude, did it. We did it, and you did it, man. The Shazam for one last time. We are here. Double gun. Beautiful. We did it. Where's Dan Yuki? Dan Yuki, let's give a helicopter. 